Once the kids are finished cutting their 19 notches, they're to go to the store and get a pre-cut piece of yarn. And for me, I just grabbed a little ball of yarn and a piece of tape. They don't need an entire thing, just one piece will work. They're to bring the tape, the yarn, and their plate to the floor, put it all on the floor in front of them and wait for directions. The first step is a piece of cake. So what we usually do is just turn the loom over to the back, take your yarn, Take the end of the yarn with only about an inch and a half of waist, and it can go inside of any of the notches. It does not matter, so I'll just start with this one at the top. I'm gonna slide it in. To get it to stay, to be secure, I'm just going to add a little piece of tape. I tell them this is the easiest step. Don't get used to how easy this is. So once they've got it taped down, their next step is to turn the plate over and actually masking tape works way better than scotch tape. I just had used what was on hand. Flip your plate over and what you're going to do is pull your yarn down so it pretty much divides your plate in half. However, since you did not cut an even number, your notches won't be even on either side and that's okay. I usually have them count and make sure that there's a larger number. I think I usually say on the left side. I'm not really sure because it doesn't matter. Just decide which side has the larger number and which side you want all the kids to have the same larger number on. Trust me, you're all going to want to be in sync with this. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and have my nine notches be on the right hand side and my eight empty notches be on the left. And I'll tell the kids they need to do the exact same thing. Nine notches on the right, eight on the left, go ahead and put it in at the bottom so it's like north and south and then pause and wait for me. Once they have all their plates on the floor and I know they're ready to go, I tell them things are about to get a little bit tricky and they need to listen very carefully. So they're not allowed to touch anything. Their eyes are on me the entire time until I say go. So I tell them that this is a pattern. You'll do the same thing over and over again. Once you've got the pattern, it's a piece of cake. So all you do is this. Here's the end of your yarn. Have the end of your yarn go visit the next door neighbor. This guy, the one on the side of the street with the nine notches. Have him go in the neighbor's house. The neighbor says, get out of here. What are you doing in my house? And he runs all the way across the plate, making the world's skinniest X, at which point I'll say, is this the skinniest X? How about this? This, and they say yes. So we go ahead and slide it into there. It's at that point, I'll undo it. And I have them tell me the steps, or I'll do a call and response. Go to the neighbor's house run across the street, make the world's skinniest X, go in that neighbor's house, stop. I'll pause for a minute. They'll do the same thing. If you see a neighbor struggling, please help your neighbor. Once that's finished and I know their plates are on the floor and they're ready to go, I tell them that the next part of the pattern that they will always do is they will always rotate the plate so that this long string is at the bottom. For some reason, I find it a lot easier to explain the patterning if I do it this way. And I'll say, okay, what do I do? Go to the neighbor's house, run all the way across the street, no, nah, yes. Rotate the plate. The reason you wanna rotate the plate is because if you don't, a lot of the kids will take the string and they'll wrap it around to the back to get it to the bottom and that's a waste of string. So that's why I always say rotate. And meanwhile, they're just watching me and we're doing it again and again until I know they've got it. To the neighbor, world's skinniest X, rotate the plate. Neighbor, skinniest X, although it's getting wider, and rotate the plate. And at this point, You'll have kids that are pretty anxious. They're like, man, we got this. We know what we're doing. But it's honestly very important that they just watch you over and over again. And once you're done demonstrating, I mean, I'm so mean and rotten that I'll actually unwind it 
and have them watch me just one more time. It really helps if you have something like a document camera or an Elmo so they can see everything more clearly. If you don't have one of those things, think about demonstrating on a very large embroidery hoop or even possibly a hula hoop so everybody can see clearly what you're doing. Now, I'm in my last neighbor's house. Oops, I should have put that at the bottom for you. You go all the way up to the top, rotate it, go in the neighbor, and now you're ready to weave. This string that has nowhere to go is now going to become your weft string for weaving. So if it's um, really long like mine is, you might want to have it go about the length of the plate and then go ahead and snip that. So it's about a good amount of yarn for you to start weaving. And I'll pause right there before we talk about how to weave.